Lieutenant Juarez went into labor at 0400 hours. The Enterprise is awaiting the arrival of the starship Zukov, and guest quarters have been prepared for Ambassador Tapel. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. My name is Ryan T. Husk, and today we're doing a review of Star Trek The Next Generation Season 4, Episode 11, entitled Data's Day. Some of you may call it Data's Day, but you're wrong. Story by Harold Apter, teleplay by Harold Apter and Ronald D. Moore, directed by Robert Weimer. This was the first episode of 1991, January 5th, 1991. Where were you, everybody, and how are you today, Sirach Lofton? I am great. Doing great. Sirach's day. Yep. <laughs> there should have been a Jake's day. That would have been fun. Hey, uh, everybody, I know that I said Lieutenant Juarez went into labor at 0, 0400 hours. I know the correct way to say it is O oh, 400 hours. So don't get on me too hard about that. Um, <laughs> what about Jake's day? What do you think? Would that have been a fun episode? Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, Jake, uh, what getting in touch with him, his emotions or talking about the friends that he has in his life. I thought that was one of the aspects I liked about this episode. Just the whole rundown of what each person means to me kind of thing. You know, I thought uh, I could have gotten a lot of that. Um, yeah. Because it's it's both data analyzing his emotions and his relationships with people, um, and also acknowledging certain things that I didn't know before this, um, per se. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Data had a line in this episode where he says, "Jordy is my best friend." Do you remember that? Yeah, I think he I think he says something like, "Jordy is." Uh, is my base, is my best friend, and he acknowledged that. And I, I don't remember hearing that before this. This is the first I actually hear those words spoken. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen chemistry between them, but you know, I've, you know, the, Jordy has good chemistry with a lot of people, but um, to hear those particular words of what Jordy means to Data, Jordy's got a lot of chemistry with dudes, but. Uh... Women, he's got. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that works out. Um, because he might be Wesley's best friend too. I mean, I, I would guess that as well, hmm. you know. Yeah, now he they, they he calls him his friend in previous episodes, but this might be the first time he calls him his best friend. And I really like this episode a lot. And I remember predicting that this was probably Jason Oaken's favorite episode of season four because I feel like for a lot of long time Star Trek fans. We're okay with these bottle episodes that give you an in-depth look at a specific character. And this was that, not only that, but we were introduced to three new characters. And this makes me think, how cool would it be if every single season had Data's Day, Riker's Day, Troy's Day, right? Uh, Troy's Day sounds like Thursday, but like season <laughs> season one would definitely have a Picard's Day because they really would try to focus on Picard. Season two would probably be a, a Riker's Day. Um, season one might have a Wesley's Day too, actually, come to think of it. It would most likely be a Wesley's Day. And then maybe season three might have a Troy's Day and then season five. Will, anyway, that would be so much fun to see that because because when you're looking at an episode through the lens of a specific character, you're seeing the world around them. And so you get to be introduced to new characters and new ideas and new themes. Like if you have a, a Beverly Crusher's day, you get to meet the people in sickbay, the, the medical staff, you know, her mm -hmm. favorite nurse or the, the doctor that she kind of rumbles with, you know, and then she comes home and it turns out she has a pet hamster or something. You know what I mean? You, you get to kind of expand on each group a little bit more. And, and that's just so much fun. I wish we had done that more in this show. But, you know, there are other episodes that are similar to that. But this one really hits it. Did you enjoy it, though? Because I sure did. Um, there were aspects of it that I enjoyed. Um, a little bit concerned with the tempo for me 
think that uh, the director, Robert uh, Waymar, could have picked up the tempo a little bit to me. It was it was a little bit slow in certain areas, and the shots were not moving it quicker. They mm -hmm. were kind of slowing the pace down as well, some of those shots. So I would have liked uh, kind of a, di a different director's spin on it. But there were aspects of it that I did enjoy, and that is kind of the backstory elements. For example, um, I got to see where Keiko and O'Brien get married, you know, and, and for me, I, this is, this is new information. Like, okay, it's this is Keiko's good. big yeah. introduction. This is it. This was her yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is, that's why I'm, I'm gratified for the origin of that kind of storyline because I know Keiko and I have that relationship with her, but I didn't know this is how they met. I didn't know data was the one that introduced them. Um, so those kinds of, uh, filling in on the backstory is what I appreciate about this episode. Were you a little surprised to see Keiko? Were you just like, whoa, all of a sudden, there's Rosalind? I was Cow. super surprised. Yeah, I was super surprised. And then I was thinking, this is the first time I'm seeing her, right? Because I, I almost felt like mm -hmm. in my mind she was always there, but I guess she wasn't, you know? And that was just me filling in the, the gap in my own, you know, database. But no, actually seeing her for the first time in this episode was great. Um, seeing the origin of their story. Like I said, also the fact that Data knows her longer and he's the introduced, you know, he introduced the two of them. I think that's a nice backstory. Um, which is, you know, interesting because you would think that that O'Brien's his best friend too, right? He's like, he introduced him to his wife, you know what I mean? So it's like he... He must know him pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that I gathered from this episode was this is a, a big increase in O'Brien's storyline, right? Now he's actually getting his character filled out with, you know, more storyline. He's getting a, a supplemental character added on, which is exactly which That's is how when, you expand yeah. a character. Now, right? That, like, that's how you know you're not going anywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's like Lita coming in with Rom. It's 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 like oh, we're expanding this character. It's this is character's growing. It's not shrinking. Mm -hmm. And so for me, this is a sign that they like O'Brien and that they want to expand on his character. Yeah, it's a huge step. And you know, it's interesting you mentioned Rom because that is there's a very good parallel between those two characters. Rom in the first episode of Deep Space Nine was just called like Ferengi Pit Boss, right? He didn't even have a name. Mm -hmm. He was totally different. He was just like, you know, doing this kind of stuff. And he really wasn't going to mm -hmm. do much. Same thing with O'Brien. When O'Brien was first introduced, also in the first episode of Next Generation, he didn't even have a name. He wasn't called O'Brien. He was called like Battle Bridge Lieutenant or something like that. So both of them were in the first episodes of their series without a name, but they had like a, a title, you know, the, a, a description of who they portrayed. And then they kind of came back later on as like minor supplementary roles, you know, like he's transporter chief, he's Quark's brother. And then they start getting girlfriends or they start getting wives and their storyline starts to expand because the actor is shining through and we're loving yes. the actor and he's super charming and making the character likable. Wow, that is, uh, I never thought of that, but that's a very paralleled trajectory with those two. Yeah, and the other uh, thing I would add to that is that one of the things that becomes synonymous with Chief O'Brien's character is his crankiness and his, you know, his, his kind of, agitation mm -hmm. and and a crankiness and i believe that those things started to become clear in this episode as well so as far as character definition i started to see some of that um become more apparent than it had been in previous episodes where he would get one line here one line there in this moment he was like well, why would she go and do that? And he's complaining and he's back to, he's doing the O'Brien complaining about things <laughs> and awkwardness when he tried to sit down and he gets up and he's kind of awkward. 
that becomes a big character defining aspect of how he portrays the character. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, we've gotten little hints of it in the past, but only because we're looking for that. We know what kind of character O'Brien is. So when he goes like, oh, I don't know, sir, or something like that, we're like, oh, I've seen a little O'Brien yeah. sneaking out. But this was the first yeah. time that the writers are like, let's make him haughty. Let's make him cranky. Let's make him gruff. Let's make him a little rough around the edges, you know? Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and obviously we get to know a lot more about data like that he has a fabulous smile <laughs> what kind of awkward smile was that it was so and and then he and he does it right into the camera like he's he breaks the the wall and he looks right into the camera like hey look what i got here and it was kind of i was like what? it was uh it was a little bit contradictory to how I perceived data to be right. It was, it was, it was too cheesy. It was that right there was a Brent Spiner moment. <laughs> that was not a data moment. <laughs> right. Brent Spiner's comedic stylings yes. shine through on data, which really makes yes. him brilliant to be able to. But when he holds it back, I like it better when it's more in the subtext of what he's saying, as opposed to this kind of overt, facial yeah. expression when he's when he's like i don't understand why what do you mean and he's doing doing it that way i like that version of his comedic stuff you know uh there was a specific line that kind of illustrates that i think and that was when i think beverly asked him are you nervous it was either beverly or keiko asked him oh you're not nervous are you are you nervous about the wedding and he goes I am not nervous. Like, like the way he said it was kind of like, what? Yeah. <laughs> why would you even say such a thing? Why would I be, you know, and, and we're laughing because we know he's yeah. not nervous, but also we're kind of like, I don't know, Data, maybe you are a little nervous, yeah. you little rascal. I am not nervous. He's so always yeah. so puzzled. And the way he talks about the way Riker was like flirting with that girl, he's like, yeah, and so this thing happened and that thing happened. And he's like, I've noticed uh, there may be a, a correlation between humor and sex, you know, and that was also. Yeah. Um, um, for example, his awkward joke when he runs up on uh, Jordy at the barbershop, you know, he gives him that lump head or whatever it was. You lunkhead. Lunk <laughs> you lunkhead. <laughs> He's like, I'm experimenting with jokes. It's like, no, not that wasn't the one. Um, but you do do a lot of experimenting with jokes. <laughs> yeah, this is this is uh, this is where I do all my experimentation of jokes. <laughs> uh, my favorite data line in this episode, though, hands down, and this again back to the kind of comedy that I like best. This is the kind of comedy to me when Brent Spiner is killing it as data. This is the kind of stuff he does when he was in the dancing scene with dr crusher and she starts teaching him that one foot move and he starts doing that one foot move over yeah. and over and he says am i am i dancing doctor and she's like stop 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 and he's just like <laughs> dancing into her and all that so funny yeah when he when he said that I, he, I was dying i was dying so those yeah. kinds of that's that's the kind of humor that i like the best out of him you know where he he's awkward but he doesn't even know that he's awkward you know he's acting he's acting like he doesn't know that he's awkward uh to me those are the moments when he you know the, the funniest for me um mm -hmm. so yeah the over-the-top facial expressions that that's like to me that's more brent spiner saying hey, look they gave me a pretty girl to dance with <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh there were a lot of funny moments just in that dancing thing too like not just when he was dancing into her which was funny but i also thought it was really cool the way they switched hands you know, he's looking down at her feet and he's going like this. And she's like, okay, now switch. Yeah. And he just, they just went whoosh, like that. And their yeah. hand just clasped. I was like, wow, that was, that was kind of cool. Yeah. You know, Cause he's looking down at it, you know? And I thought that was fun choreography. I don't know whose idea that was. I have a feeling that was not a director thing. I have a feeling that was either Beverly or Brent, sorry, Gates or Brent saying, Hey, why don't we like that? You know, cause they're now, Gates, Gates is a dancer, right? Cause she looks like yes. she's, 
And she, if dancer. I remember correctly, she choreographed that entire scene. She's also a dance choreographer and she choreographed that entire thing. And she did all the moves and Brent Spiner did most of the moves. You can notice a, uh, uh, you know, a, yeah, a stunt double. I saw that one guy. Yeah. yeah, for a couple of those things. But he did about <laughs> 70% of it, which is pretty impressive on his part. That, he was husky data. <laughs> he, was, yeah. he was a little bit bulkier than, than uh, Brent Spider to be like body type wise. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't as slim as uh, Brent is. So as, it, the contrast was there immediately. He had his head down so you wouldn't see, but. Right, yeah. right. But, so. but. Uh, I believe Gates did uh, choreograph that entire thing, and she's clearly she clearly knows what she's yeah, doing you can tell. because she was unbelievable. Yeah, she was unbelievable. She would look like she's a, a high level dancer. Actually, after seeing that, I was like, "Wow, where was Dancing with the Stars?" Because she would have been perfect for a Dancing wow. with the Stars, yeah. you know, <clears throat> cameo. Um, but yeah, those were that that whole dance scene in general was just fantastic. I. The moment where he's kind of dancing, he's looking down at her feet, but still kind of moving. And then she's like, look me in the eyes. And he he, he says, this is a lot of information to process or something, something to that yeah. effect. And another moment where he had me rolling because here he is, this supercomputer that could, you know, calculate stuff to the, to the second and, you know, into the eight, tenth decimal. But dancing was like complex for him right he's like mm -hmm. wait a minute i gotta look up i gotta i got a lead I gotta <laughs> well, how do i lead what does that even mean so here's something uh over at imdb.com real quick check this out uh gates mcfadden right. choreographer oh yeah um, also of note chance taylor was the dance double for brent spiner we also know our okay. buddy eric still well uh richard arnold is yeah. here the akudas a lot of a lot of fun and interesting names Brandon Braga, intern. Wow, uncredited. Rick Sternbach. I mean, Susan Sackett. These are a lot of big names that we know now, but back in 1990 and 91, they were yeah. an uncredited intern. They were, uh, you know, uh, an assistant here and there. But anyway, yeah. really interesting. Good stuff there. Well, Gates clearly can dance. You can tell that she can dance. Um, and dance in multiple ways, not, not just like tap dancing or, you know, she, she can dance in whatever kind of form you need her to dance. Um, and I believe that Na as well can also dance, um, to, you know, to a high mm -hmm. level of degree. So, yeah, they get an opportunity to showcase their, their skills. Um, but no less than Patrick Stewart gets to showcase his Shakespeare every once in a while. You know, they actually gave Gates a chance to showcase her dancing ability, the dancing doctor. Yeah. And then that's how they do it. You know, whenever you want somebody to have a nickname, you just have them say, Oh, don't call me the dancing. I don't want that nickname again. <laughs> like before. And everybody's like, yeah, let's call her the dancing doctor. You know, it works. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> you know, that's how they, you know, that's <laughs> yeah, that is that thing. Yeah, but there were a lot of Don't laughs. Do that. Um, oh, there was also another funny moment for me was when Tapel comes on the ship and Data is in the turbo lift with her, and we're listening to his internal monologue, of course. And she's standing there, and she's you know right here, and he's just kind of like, yeah, that like it, looking it, at her out of the corner <laughs> of his eye, you know. And to me, that's the non-Data part. To me, that's, that's Brent. That's Brent, right? Because at that moment, he chose to take it a little bit over the top in that moment because he he, he did that several times. And unless he's got some kind of emotional chip upgrade, it, it's not consistent with the data that I think I've seen up until this point, you know, um, where he, he, he plays awkward moments and he doesn't actually look at people with those kinds of eye rolls and, and like, what is this dude talking about? face you know he, he takes people at face at face value or he logically you know says actually that is incorrect and you know he, he's more matter of fact about it and less facially emotionally you know so mm -hmm. i thought he went a little bit over the top on the facial expressions and facial uh, emojis another example of that was when um so you said at the, in the elevator scene with 
to Pell, right? He kind of like he's looking at her like, like what is she like? Look, you know, look at her hat or something. I don't know what the face was, what you know, what she was, what it was that was like making him feel he that way. Just but. he was just doing the internal monologue of, of like, I wonder why she's here. I wonder what's going on here. And so he was. So while he's thinking that, he's just like looking at her like, you know, yeah, yeah. And he did that again at, the, at another point where I felt, oh, in the barber shop, he comes in, he talks to Jordy, and then behind him is this alien, which looked really cool with the makeup. This woman, you know, was dressed up and was getting yeah. her hair um, laser beamed or whatever it was that the barber was doing, right? But he's standing there giving a, a, um, a close up. Um, to Jordy, talking directly to Jordy, facing the camera. And then he does one of these things where he kind of like notices that she's getting her hair done behind him. And he does one of these like, like, hmm, that's weird. Like, you, hmm, getting your hair done. And, you know, like a another emotionally expressive, facially expressive moment that you don't see from data, right? He's like, oh, that's curious. You're getting your hair done. All oh, hmm, that's weird. Mm -hmm. um, you don't you don't see those kinds of moments on data. He's very like just processing information. So you would see him more like, oh, okay, you're back there doing that. You know, uh, it wouldn't be like that's weird. Like, what kind of alien are you? Or or what are you getting done to your yeah. hair? Yeah, Brent Spiner sneaks in a lot of human reactions to data constantly. And obviously more so in this episode, you know, like when somebody says something that's a little puzzling, he goes like, hmm. sometimes he just does a little, huh, or, hmm, you know, like a reaction. I'm like, I don't think an Android, an Android would just process it and move on, but he reacts. He goes, huh, or, hmm, you know, or like little things like that, oh, puzzling, yeah, you know, whatever. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But we'll uh, nitpick a little bit more on the other side. We're going to take a break. And then we'll also, I'd love to talk about the characters that were introduced. That was a lot of fun. We kind of touched on two of the three. We'll be right back on the seventh. Say it with me. Rule. Ooh, like I'm <laughs> 